So when our kids bring home their artwork um, or their stories from school, we pretty much know how to talk to them about it now. We say, wow, the details in your story were really interesting, or you worked really hard to fill up that whole page with lots of different colors. When we go to their little kid concerts and their plays and their readings and their art shows, we know we're not going to see the next Yo-Yo Ma or Jane Austen, and certainly not someone at the peak of their career, but we still go. We still go see recitals because we know it's really important for young musicians and young actors and young writers, which is all of our kids, to do what writers and musicians and actors do to create original work and to share it with people. So we have learned as a culture how to appreciate that. Have we learned that from math class? How could we make it so that kids are bringing home creative original math work for their parents to see? So their parents see them as mathematicians and we know that kids are mathematical thinkers way before they've reached graduate level mathematics. An elementary school teacher, a friend of mine, Kristen Gray, she knows how to get her kids to do this. Um, she gave them the problem, multiply 81 by 82, and she asked them to think about it in different ways. And then the best thing happened. One of her kids got it wrong, and he could explain what he did. And then the next day, he came in and he said, Miss Gray, I want to make a video explaining to kids if they made my same mistake, why it's wrong. So this is a still from the video he made where he's, he explained where he overcounted some in his partial products methods. If your kids do thinking like that, is there a way for them to make a video? Could they share the video online? Do you have a class math journal that they could publish their thinking in? Or maybe you could just email it to me and I could find ways to let other kids and teachers know. A middle school teacher I know, David Cox, gave his kids a really cool open middle problem. Um, he asked, if you draw a rectangle on graph paper and you draw a diagonal, how many squares will the diagonal go through? And the way his students tackled it was really interesting. They really enjoyed coming up with wrong answers, with rules that didn't always work, and wrecking them. The kids would be like, I think I have a rule. Who can wreck it? Oh, that one doesn't work. I have another rule. Who can wreck it? And even they would wreck their own rule. If your kids do some kind of mathematical thinking like that, could they blog about it? Do you have a family math night and they could make a movie about how to wreck your own rule? Or maybe, again, you could email it to me and I could put it on a math forum blog or I could tweet about it. A high school teacher I know, Megan Schmidt, um, saw this picture on Facebook. The house is being tinted because there's a spider infestation. Um, but she wanted to know, and her kids wanted to know, how big is that tent that it could cover a whole house? The math teacher who posted it shared his own thinking, but Megan's students said, we don't think he did a good enough job. Not only did they come up with their own better estimate, but they wrote back to him on Facebook and critiqued his own thinking. And he's a math teacher. If your kids do something like that, would they then contact the tenting company, find out if, how accurate their estimate was, and contact real mathematicians who are on Twitter or Facebook and see if they could beat the estimate? Or maybe you could email it to me and again, I could find some mathematicians to talk to your kids about their estimation. A pre calc teacher I know, Sam Shaw, had his kids make art in math class. Um, in order to make this image, all they manipulated was an algorithm and some functions. So it was the math that was driving the art that they made. But then once their art was made, he made giant posters. They hung them up all over the school. If your kids did that, maybe you could have an art opening with cheese and grape juice. And um, you could email me those pictures. And again, I would find places for them so your kids' thinking could be featured publicly. I want to find so many ways for us to recognize mathematical thinking in kids, and not just the little genius prodigy kids who go on talk shows, because every kid is a mathematical thinker right now, and it's worth sharing their thinking the way they share their writing. So, here's what you can do. Find open middle problems for you to give, give to your kids. If there's a problem that they can do multiple ways, then they can compare their thinking to each other. That's original thinking. It's worth bringing home to mom and dad. It's worth talking about. Open-ended problems are also wonderful to talk about. Estimating immeasurable things is so much fun. Can your kids estimate how many croissants are served at Heathrow Airport every year? It was in the New York Times last week. Um, or maybe they could create visual sound or dance patterns where math is the generator. So you can find open middle and open-ended problems, listen to whatever your kids come up with, help them celebrate their thinking, and then find out with me how we can share it with a real audience because that is so important to recognizing that your kids are mathematicians. So I want you guys all to 
pledge today that you will find a way for all your students to share their unique mathematical imaginations, share them with you, share them with their school, with their family, with the world, and especially with me. Email me, max at mathforum.org.